Hey, Homeworthy. I'm Eric. This is my San Francisco loft apartment. Come on in. I'd love to show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. I am Eric Wang. I am now a full-time content creator on Instagram, TikTok, and recently YouTube. Um, but just six months ago, I used to be a consultant at Bain & Company, which is a consulting firm uh, in San Francisco. So we are in my San Francisco loft apartment. Uh, this is around a 1400 square foot apartment uh, with very tall windows, which is what attracted to me uh, in the first place. Um, I'd say my home is sort of my comfort area. I really, when I first moved here, I wanted to create a space that made me feel very zen and very cozy and just very relaxed, um, especially because I used to work in consulting. I was working like 60 hours a week. And so whenever I came home, I always wanted to come home to a space that just made me feel very at peace. So I graduated from UC Berkeley in the May 2022. Um, and so when I was looking for housing, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, I actually wasn't even into interior design or like architecture that much before. Um, but surprisingly, I actually found this apartment on Craigslist. Um, and after I scheduled, I remember one day I scheduled like five or six apartment tours in the city and I just hit all of them at the same time. And this was actually the last one and I definitely did not have very high hopes because um, the landlord who listed it had taken pretty poor photos of the space. And so I had no idea that it had such big windows. I didn't know it got so much natural light. Um, and so I really just stumbled upon it and found it for, I think, a pretty great price, especially for San Francisco. And so. Yeah, we, we signed the lease pretty quickly and decided to move in uh, pretty shortly after. I think with the other apartments that we were touring, there were always like a few things where it's like, oh, I wish I got more natural light or I wish it was in an area that was like a little quieter or something. Um, but I feel like when we first stepped into this apartment and like, I guess you'll see it in the tour, but when you first step in, it immediately opens into the big living room and the windows. And so I think just like that first gut reaction of walking into the space and seeing like all the natural light that comes through the really big windows and just how it just, I guess, spacious, the sp everything felt, um, I feel like it was like a pretty immediate reaction of like, oh yeah, we want this one. Welcome to my entryway. Um, it's a pretty small entryway because the whole apartment is very open plan and open concept, but uh, I did the most with what I can with a small space. And so right here you have uh, a pretty large window, um, which some storage here. I have a little disposal camera that I keep for my little weekend adventures as well as some pictures um, and then this bench right here I usually sit down here to tie my shoes or take my shoes off um, which is pretty convenient to have right the entryway um, and then you also notice I have a little paper lantern I have a lot of paper lanterns throughout my entire home because I'm really in love with the whole uh, sort of Japanese design concept so lots of little lamps like that um, as well as this pothos plant to bring a little bit of life to this corner this is pretty much the only plant that'll survive in low light like this and so I got one of those also and then coming over to this corner right here um, I've got this locker from Mus Mustard Made um, so not a super traditional shoe cabinet but uh, it works very well to uh, has sort of like an entryway area so all the shoes are in here um, a lot of storage space and then I also have some little knickknacks on top. So a cool one I'll point out is this phone cleaner right here. So I um, am pretty passionate about fitness and going to the gym. But one thing I do at the gym all the time is throw my phone on the floor absolutely everywhere. And so I actually think I got mono from the gym once. And so after that little episode, I decided to buy this phone cleaner, which you put your phone in here and it sort of sucks it in and cleans off the germs with uh, UV rays, which is pretty cool and just gives me a little bit more peace of mind that my phone's not super dirty. Um, and then yeah, I've got a little little cork box here for my keys and then a little lamp just to light the area a little bit But yeah, that's pretty much it for the entryway. Let's go over to the living room
All right, so now we are in the living room, which is the main feature of the home. This is where I spend the most time and also probably where I put the most money and energy <laughs> into decorating. Um, you'll notice in this little corner, I have sort of a cozy little reading nook. Um, I have another uh, paper lamp right here. This is a uh, Akari paper lamp, so I bought this from the Noguchi Museum. Um, that was sort of one of my big first expensive purchases for this home. I've always been in love with those lamps, and so I finally saved up enough money to buy one of those a while ago. Um, you'll also notice, again, a lot of plants, a lot of uh, trees here. So I have a money tree here, which I've grown since it was just about this tall, and so it's definitely come a long way. Um, as well as this shelf right here, I have some more plants, and then um, this shelf is a pretty recent installation. It's from String Design, um, and I wasn't really sure what to do with this blank wall for a while. I experimented with a little bit of art, but um, I feel like this is really great. You can see sort of some of the little objects that I love to feature in my home. So um, some books that I really like, some more portable lamps, uh, some little Legos up here. Um, I feel like I really loved playing with Legos as a kid, and so it's great that Lego sort of came out with home decor featured, or focused Legos to feature in a home. And then, uh, yeah, a little Monstera pillow here to match the plant theme. And then right here, you might be wondering what this is. This is a uh, cat piece of cat furniture. And so I do have a cat. And um, I get a lot of questions about how my cat does not mess up my furniture. And the answer is I buy her her own furniture. And so she spends a lot of time here. She loves scratching it. She loves sitting on top of it. Um, and yeah, I think it also looks pretty great. There's not a lot of uh, aesthetic uh, cat furniture on the internet, but I managed to find this one from a brand called Tuft & Paw. So very happy about this. And then I guess I'll, on the topic of cat furniture, I'll also talk about uh, this piece right here. This is a very tall cat tree, um, which I bought for my cat, and she spends the most time sitting up here, sort of watching over the whole room. Um, this sort of area I wasn't really sure what to do with for a really long time. As you can see, it's sort of the entryway area, or I guess you'd call it maybe like a foyer. Um, but there's a closet behind for clothes and stuff, but there just always felt like this awkward space. And so um, I decided to fill it with this very tall cat tree sitting on top of this uh, Monstera rug down here, which I also love. And then as you can see here, um, this is what I love the most about the apartment, which is this very large set of windows right here. Um, I think these windows are around 20 or 16 feet tall, if I remember correctly. Um, and when I first moved in here, it's like the first thing that I noticed immediately right off the bat. Um, it's obviously brings in a lot of amazing natural light, um, but at the same time, I feel like almost acts as sort of uh, a feature of the home itself. You know, I know a lot of people like to have art in their home. I don't like to feature a ton of art just because I'm pretty, uh, I guess, minimalist or simplistic in that way. But I feel like this with the backdrop of the brick wall in the background almost feels like its own little art piece. And so um, really love that. It's what drew me to the apartment in the first place. Um, on this side of the wall, you'll notice I have this uh, media stand right here, as well as this uh, Samsung Serif TV. Uh, I spent a lot of time looking for a TV that I felt like would match the overall sort of uh, neutral and almost like sculptural aesthetic of my living room. And so I finally found this one over Christmas, um, and I'm really happy with it. I think it looks more honestly like, again, like a home decor piece or a sculptural piece rather than TV, which is usually just, you know, a boring black box. Um, and then I also have these white speakers on the side of it to sort of tie everything together. Over in this corner, I actually just picked this up this last weekend. So it's still in a pot, which is like a temporary solution. I'm getting an actual planter, don't worry. Um, but this is a black olive tree, or it's also known as a shady lady tree. Um, this was on my bucket list for a really long time, and I haven't found it for almost, I think, a year and a half while I was looking for it just because they're pretty hard to come by and the ones on the internet that you can get shipped to your house are very, very expensive. And so um, I finally found it from someone locally this weekend, but I think this tree you typically only really see in either, I feel like interior designer homes or like um, very expensive like celebrity homes. And so I was really, really happy to pick this up. And I think uh, it really adds to the whole sort of Zen, uh, Japanese, Scandinavian style of the living room really well. And I also love how the, the light sort of diffuses through it, the small leaves, and um, kind of leaves nice little shadows on the wall. In this little corner right here is my cat's favorite perching spot. So she'll sit up here and watch the birds sort of fly by on the windows a lot. Um, obviously, it gets a lot of sun as well, so she loves sunbathing here. And then right under that, we have her little pedestal, which she climbs onto the cat hammock with. So she also loves spending time on here. And again, you can see it's sort of the whole white and wood aesthetic. So Again, super happy to have found cat furniture that fits in really well with the overall aesthetic of my space. 
Um, sitting down right here, I have a uh, old vintage lamp from Ikea. Um, my, I would describe my home furniture choices as sort of a mix between uh, a bunch of different price points and a bunch of different sort of retailers. And so I don't really buy too many things from the same place. I always like to feature a lot of different designs in my home. And so um, this is one of the earliest things that I picked up actually back in college. And I found this on Facebook Marketplace for I think like $10. Um, and so it, it's funny that I bought it back then, and, but it's still being featured in my home now. And then this sofa right here uh, is also a pretty recent uh, acquisition. Uh, this is a Togo sofa from Linnea Rosé. Um, and so this is an authentic Togo. It uh, is probably the most pricey thing in my home. I definitely saved up a really long time for this. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy to have it. It's obviously a very iconic design piece, which I'm sure you've seen all over the internet. And it's something that I definitely wanted to pick up for a very long time. And so very happy to have this uh, in my home. And I think it just fits the overall space really well. And then moving on to the main sort of couch right here. Um, this couch is pretty low to the floor, um, as with all my furniture. So the Togo is pretty low to the floor. This couch is pretty low to the floor. I think even though I do have very tall ceilings and I probably could get away with having higher furniture, I like my space to feel very grounded and sort of very cozy, almost like you're just hanging out on the floor or like on cushions. And so this couch is pretty low to the floor, but it definitely gets the job done and it's very cozy. Um, we watch movies here all the time and yeah, just a great space to kind of just chill out and um, relax at the end of the day. In the middle right here, you'll notice I have my coffee table. So this is a Nelson bench. Um, again, one of my favorite design pieces, and on top of it, I have a few little knickknacks, so like my controllers in this uh, sort of ceramic uh, holder. I have um, a book about cats because I do love cats and I have a cat. Um, and then I also have a lot of interior or architecture-focused coffee books, like um, this one called Small Architecture. I have this one, which is about uh, creating new homes from old recycled materials. And so a big fan of just you know design and architecture as a whole, so I have a lot of books to reflect that. And then under here, I also have some floor cushions, um, which I use whenever I have guests over. Obviously, we do have a lot of seating, but in the event that we ever have like, you know, eight to 10 people over, it's always very helpful to have extra seating. And so I sort of kind of just toss them on the floor sometimes, and people can sit around the coffee table for playing like board games or something like that. So I have those. And then I also have this uh, little blanket basket, which I just sort of keep extra throw blankets whenever we want to get cozy on the couch. Cool. And then I'll quickly talk about some of these things right here on the side of the couch. Um, I have a lot of sort of <laughs> little stools or side tables, I guess you could call them. So uh, this one's the cork stool from Vitra. I have uh, these three stackable stools from Artec. And so again, a really big fan of uh, sort of those classic design manufacturers and um, designers. And then, yeah, I really love stackable stools like this because they're so multifunctional. Again, I can use them for obviously like extra seating if I want people over. Um, I put them on the side as sort of like side tables. So I'll put my phone on there. I'll put controllers on there. Um, and then even if you know, you're know you on the couch and you sort of want to kick your feet up, you can sort of put it there and, and do that as well. And so yeah, definitely a big fan of these sort of multifunctional pieces of furniture. And then coming around to the this corner over here, um, you'll notice, I, again, I mentioned earlier, I don't have a lot of art in my apartment, but the very few pieces of art that I do have are almost exclusively all for my sister. So um, my sister, I feel like, is really someone who's influenced me a lot in terms of my interest in design as a whole. So uh, she works as a fashion designer in Los Angeles as well as um, uh, an independent artist. And so this is one of her pieces right here. She makes very sort of uh, eclectic and complicated uh, collage type um, multimedia paintings. And so this is one of the smaller pieces that I have featured in the living room. And then uh, in this corner, again, I have another sort of like side table, I guess you could say, with um, some interesting pottery inside, as well as some more books about design. And then on top, I have, um, you know, just some little vases, a lot of flowers. Again, I love to feature a lot of, even though this, I don't have like an outdoor area of my home, I try to want to re really bring in uh, the outdoors inside of my home. And so a lot of flowers and a lot of plants uh, like you can see right here, this very large bird of paradise. Um, this is one of the first plants that I bought for the apartment. I think I got it when it was around like a little bit shorter than me, so maybe like five and a half feet tall. And I think this largest leaf right here is now probably, I don't know, over seven or eight feet tall. And so it's, uh, that's really also grown a lot here. 
And then right here, I have this, again, uh, vintage IKEA shelf. Um, this is fully modular, and so you'll notice that uh, these panels can all come out, which I think is super helpful. You'll notice that I took off the panels on the side to sort of let the plants grow through it, which I think is very unique. Um, I believe this is a piece from 2013, I think. And again, I found this on Facebook Marketplace, which is where I source a lot of my sort of uh, older pieces that are no longer in production. Uh, and again, yeah, just a bunch of little knickknacks and things that sort of bring personality to the space. I have um, some boxes for storage in the bottom. I have a lot of plants. I have more coffee table books. Um, again, got a bunch of Legos <laughs> because I am a really big fan of Legos. And um, I always want to sort of bring a more playful uh, sort of aspect to my home whenever I can. And so I have those Legos right here. Um, this right here is a very iconic lamp. This is a Louis Poulsen lamp. Um, and so this is the Penthella lamp specifically. And so again, this is what was on my list for a really long time and I think is sort of started the movement of this whole uh, mushroom shaped <laughs> lamps that you see a lot nowadays. And so super happy to have this. And then this standing lamp right here is also from Louis Poulsen, um, which is, yeah, one of my favorite lighting companies. So I think I first started getting plants in college um, and back then I killed a lot of them, I'm not gonna lie. I think I probably experimented with maybe like five to 10 plants throughout the few years and I killed basically all of them. Um, but I realized it was probably because my college uh, dorms had very poor lighting and so I tried not to take it too much to heart and so I uh, gave it a second shot when I got to this apartment and luckily, as you can probably see, they've been doing pretty well. Uh, I can't take too much credit for it. Obviously, I get a lot of amazing natural light so <laughs> that's where that's where I think most of the credit is due. Um, but yeah, I think plants are, especially because they work so well in this space, um, I think just are a great way to add liveliness to any home. And I think um, is definitely something that I talk a lot about on my content as well. I would describe my personal interior style as sort of a mix between uh, Japanese and Scandinavian design. I think people use the term like Japandi. Um, so I really, I think be because I was talking earlier about how I wanted space to feel very cozy and like very zen, um, I definitely gravitate towards a very natural both material palette and color palette. And so you'll see a lot of like wood, um, a lot of like cream and sort of uh, lighter beige tones. But then at the same time, I also wanted to avoid what people call like the sad beige aesthetic. And so um, avoiding everything having to be the exact same tone. And so I also have like little uh, little like pops of color throughout with little pieces of decor. You'll also notice I have a lot of plants to bring sort of like life and liveliness to the space. But yeah, overall just um, kind of adhering to those principles of natural materials and just very uh, neutral colors. I think a really big part of putting your personal stamp on a space is, for me, it was actually like living in the space, right? So when I first moved in here, the apartment looked pretty much like nothing like it looks like right now. And so I think I'd say like a common mistake that I see people making a lot of the time when they're decorating their homes is they'll like move in and then immediately buy like all of their furniture and sets or like they'll decorate everything very quickly. And so for me, it was really a process of actually spending time in here. And so luckily I did move in in June and I didn't start my job until September. So I had a lot of time to just like sit around and actually like live in the space and see how I feel about it, what I felt like could be changed and what things I wanted to like improve or like pieces that I wanted to find. And so I feel like I really put my own personal stamp on it, both with those like little pops of color or like um, just like things I use. For example, like I have a, 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 I have a cat and so I have a coffee table book about cats. Um, so just things like little personality flares. And then, yeah, I think in addition to that, just like the process of actually living in a space really makes me uh, realize sort of what I wanted with it. And then also let me play with the different styles that I wanted to experiment with. So that's the living room. Now I'll move on to the dining area over here and you can say hi to my cat right here or she'll run away. <laughs> um, so this obviously is not the biggest dining area in the world. And so you'll notice I have done things to sort of make the most of the space that I can. Um, obviously this dining table is pretty small. I think it's around 28 inches across. And so we only have three chairs here. Um, and so, yeah, I think uh, also because this area doesn't get as much natural light as the living room, obviously the living room kind of went with more like white and lighter wood and beige tones. Uh, this entire corner I've really made a little bit more darker and so the rug is darker. You'll notice I have these black leather dining chairs and the wood palette also is more of a walnut finish as opposed to a lighter like oak finish or, an, um, or like an ash finish. And so yeah, I have this dining table right here, have these little coasters. Um, and this portable lamp right here. 
And then again, flowers, which I like to change out. These ones are starting to go on their way out, and so we'll probably have to get new flowers pretty soon. Um, you'll notice on the window right here also, I have this little uh, bird feeder installed. Um, this is one of my cat's favorite activities. I think because we live in a city, obviously I don't have a yard, and so she doesn't really have a ton of opportunities to go outside and play, but what I do do for her is I set up this bird feeder with bird food, and so she just, sort of just sits here all day and just watches the birds come by, eat the food. Um, and yeah, I think we've honestly single-handedly probably fed an entire colony of birds because when I first moved in here, there were only a few of them, and now there are a lot of them, and they also got a lot bigger. So <laughs> I will take some credit there. Um, in this corner here, I have this, again, sort of this console or this stand um, with, again, some, some design books, um, as well as this ponytail palm plant and this mirror. I think uh, whenever I'm sort of designing a space, I'm always thinking about how, what the best way is to make it feel bigger or what, the best way to make it feel like it's more sort of like light. And so I think mirrors in general are a really great way to bring more natural light to an otherwise pretty dark corner. And so this mirror kind of reflects a lot of the light that comes in from the living room and sort of makes this area feel a little bit more lively and bright than it actually is. Um, and then I have these three bar stools right here, which we honestly use probably more than the actual dining table. Um, I feel like I'm a very casual person. I honestly don't really uh, like set up for like a real dinner very frequently. So a lot of the times uh, me and my housemate or my girlfriend would just be hanging out here. We'll be cooking dinner and talking and sort of just sitting on these bar stools um, while we're doing that. And then the last thing I'll talk about for the dining area is this uh, little coffee setup that I have. Um, I am actually not a very big drinker of coffee. And so well, when I moved into this apartment, I just invested in like an espresso. And so on mornings that I really wasn't feeling it or I didn't get a great night of sleep, I'll just make a cup of coffee using the Nespresso machine. Um, and then in sort of inside of here, uh, this is a cabinet from Castlery. And so I love sort of like the wooden slats to give you a little peek of what's inside. And so I, this is where I keep sort of like my nicer plates and uh, um, cups and stuff like that for whenever we have like dinner parties. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it here. And then again, up here, I have another one of my sister's art pieces. Uh, this is a bit of a smaller one, but I think, yeah, the darker sort of hues of this definitely fits the overall theme of the dining area very well. I'm a content creator, so I spend a lot of time on social media. Um, but I think especially in like the last two or three years, especially when I've sort of started doing uh, home decor or interior focused content, um, there are like so many amazing other content creators that either do like, for example, like home renovation projects, they do like uh, content focused on furniture or focused on design. And so I say I draw a lot of inspiration from seeing other people's homes on the internet and really uh, kind of curating a bunch of sort of uh, inspirations from that way and then deciding sort of what are specific pieces or what are specific features of this space that I like a lot that I want to incorporate into my space. And then it's a process of like, you know, playing around with the layout and stuff like that. Um, I would say I probably change like little things throughout my home, honestly, all the time. And so it never really looks the same for more than a few months. Um, so yeah. Immediate answer for what my favorite thing about the home is, is probably the windows. Um, I think it's the first thing that sort of like strikes you when you walk into the apartment. And I think it plays a really big role in providing a lot of natural light. Um, I think at the same time, it's been a little bit controversial, especially online because uh, my windows do face a brick wall, and so I don't exactly have a view, which I think is a lot of what a lot of people think of when they have windows. Um, but for me, the brick wall actually is, number one, it adds a lot of privacy. But then number two, it sort of acts as its own little accent piece in the department. I feel like you don't really see exposed brick in apartments in San Francisco. I feel like it's much more of like an East Coast, like a New York or a Boston thing. And so for me, yeah, I would say it's the combination of both the windows as well as the sort of brick wall that it faces. Now we can move into the kitchen. I'll start with the shelf here. The kitchen also, I think, compared to the rest of the apartment, isn't the biggest in the world. And so um, I put this shelf here actually to sort of divide off that entryway area, which you can kind of see through it. Um, and also just add more storage for uh, things in my kitchen. So you know, I have like more plates and stuff. I have uh, this little water carbonator right here, which I don't use too frequently, but if you want it to make carbonated water, you put, a, put water in here and then plug it in and then it makes carbonated water for you, um, as well as just a kettle. And then again, I have this uh, Lego piece right here um, to add a little bit of color and just sort of playfulness to the entire thing. Um, and then yeah, some more plants along the top to bring some greenery. greenery. 
And then this is one of my favorite plants. I actually don't know what this is called exactly, but it sort of looks like a miniature Monstera vine plant. Um, and so yeah, I think with these concrete pillars, I wasn't really sure what to do with them for a while, but I think plants are sort of a great way to fill up vertical space, especially vines like this. And so <laughs> this is Mao, um, which is actually cat in Chinese. So I, I'm fully Chinese American, and so I had a little playful name for her. Um, she's great. I think a lot of people question how, to, how I sort of have a cat in my home. And again, like I mentioned earlier, I get a lot of cat furniture for her. But she's also just an amazing cat, and um, she doesn't like bite any of my plants, actually. Um, not all of these plants are necessarily cat safe, but I guess maybe since I've gotten her for a very young age, we've just never had issues with her playing with the plants. And so she definitely brings a lot of liveliness and character to the home with her presence. The kitchen area isn't, I think, my favorite area of the home, I will say. I spend a lot of time here because I do actually love cooking at home. Um, when I first moved to the city, uh, one of my goals was to only order takeout at maximum twice a week. And so um, I slip up every once in a while, but for the most part, I try to cook pretty much all of my meals. And so a lot of chopping, a lot of uh, cooking happens on top of this countertop. Um, and then, yeah, we have a pretty basic uh, electric conduction stove over here. Um, nothing too crazy. And then I also have this, uh, this bath towel from Marameco, which is one of my favorite sort of like textile brands. And then um, one thing I will show is <laughs> I love to have a lot of sort of... Um, Things in your home that you usually wouldn't think twice about, but uh, investing more time and energy into finding really like alternatives that are not just uh, as basic as they seem. So obviously this seems like just a paper towel holder, um, but the middle actually comes out and you can see there's cleaning solution in here. And so um, it sort of doubles as a, uh, a little cleaning solution and then makes the process of cleaning a lot more efficient. So that's something kind of cool um, that I have. And then, um, I also have this automatic sensor trash can, which I use as well. Um, again, you can see everything's sort of pretty matchy-matchy. I think uh, there's a few things like my blue air fryer or the blue carbonator that I have, but for the most part, I wanted to keep sort of the palette for the kitchen as well pretty natural and just uh, matching the sort of white beige tones that are already going on. I think the one way in which I did want to make the kitchen a little more interesting was with these pothos finds. Um, I feel like there wasn't a great way for me to add a lot of green or like plants into the kitchen just because it's a pretty dark corner and obviously I can't like put plants next to the area that I'm cooking or they're going to get like fried in the heat. And so I do have these pothos vines that are hanging down from sort of the cabinets at the top which um, admittedly are not the most practical because if you're sitting at the bar seating sometimes you're going to be eating food in front of a plant. But um, I think for the most part I love the way that they look and just bring a little bit more liveliness to the otherwise relatively boring kitchen I feel like. My advice for people finding their own personal style and really sticking to it is honestly just, again, to like really live in your space and feel out what you like about it and things you don't like about it. Draw inspirations from a lot of different places. And then at the end of the day, you know, if you like something that a lot of other people like, like <laughs> that's totally fine. I feel like there's no reason to be unique for the sake of being unique. Um, I think at the end of the day, your space is obviously somewhere that you live, right? It's not where other people live. And so um, even if it's not something that a lot of people love, I'd say if it makes you happy, then <laughs> it, sh it should be okay. Um, and I think that's definitely a pressure that I've seen through my content creation. I think obviously my space tends to be, I think compared to other homes on the internet that you see that are maybe a little bit more eclectic or a little bit more colorful or have more sort of like pops, um, it's definitely on the more neutral side. Um, and there are some people that love that and there are some people who think it's very boring. <laughs> but I think uh, for me, it's, you know, it, it ultimately comes down to the fact that I love this space and it's something that I really enjoy. And so, um, yeah, I'd say don't think about it too much and just kind of anchor on your own feelings. I think what really gives a home soul is the way that you live in it and not necessarily the way that it looks. And I, I think what I mean by that is, for example, in, in my content, I, um, show a lot of different videos of like the various ways in which I use my space. And so I think what really brings life to it is like things like, like my cat here. <laughs> I have my cat, um, I have my girlfriend who visits me every weekend, and then obviously I have myself. And so living in this space and sort of interacting with all the various parts of it, and especially I think a really big thing for me is has always been uh, this idea of like function over form. Obviously, I, I try to make my apartment very aesthetic and I try to make pay attention to the little details. But at the end of the day, what I think about the most is how I'm actually going to use that space, right? Is it a couch that I'm actually going to use? Is it 
I don't know, like a side table that I'm actually going to put things on. Um, and so I think like thinking about the functionality and how you actually interact with the space is really what brings it to life rather than just buying things for the sake of it looking good or for the sake of it like following a certain trend. All right, so heading up to the second floor, um, I think it's pretty rare to have stairs in an apartment in San Francisco. And so we were definitely super happy to find a lofted apartment that has a second floor to make it sort of separate the zones. Um, the only thing I really have in the stairwell is this very large piece from, again, from my sister. And so uh, you can see a little, maybe a little bit more in detail about sort of the style of her art. She does a mix of sort of uh, multimedia. And then afterwards, when she actually prints it on the canvas, she'll actually paint over some things with hand. Um, and so, yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces from her and I think fits this stairwell really, really well. And then heading upstairs, this is my bedroom. Um, so this bedroom is uh, connected to the loft overhead. So you can see it doesn't actually technically have its own window. It sort of shares the really big window with the uh, lofted living room. But yeah, um, my bedroom, I absolutely love. It's where I obviously sleep and I sleep a lot because I very much value my sleep. Um, the bed right here, this is a Thuma bed, um, which if you don't know, uh, is a joy to put together. It has absolutely zero screws, and so it's all joined by Japanese joinery. Um, so I absolutely love my bed. I have these linen sheets on top. Um, I'm not a big fan of sort of what you normally see with bed sheets, which is sort of those satin finished shiny sheets. Um, I really love linen sheets because, number one, they actually get softer with use over time. And so. They weren't the most comfortable when I first got them, but now after using them for a while, they're super, super soft and they'll only get softer over time. Um, I also love sort of just the earthy and almost like wrinkled look of it. Um, I think some people think it looks a little bit messy. I just think it makes it seem like it has a lot more character and just, I don't know, it just feels a lot more textured. Um, and yeah, also um, notice I keep the palette for my bedroom relatively neutral as well as with, um, and then use sort of like the art for little pops of color. And then so yeah, this is another one of my sister's art pieces. Um, pretty similar to the one that was in the living room downstairs, but uh, I have this one in a white frame instead to sort of match the bedroom a little bit better. Um, hanging on this sort of wall shelf. And then on either side, I have these uh, sconces attached to the wall, um, which I use for my night lights. And then just a pretty basic nightstand on that side. On the other side over here, I have uh, this Compatibility storage unit from Cartel. Um, and so uh, this is actually much more functional than it looks. It has a lot of storage inside those three things. Um, and I think really makes for a very great bedside table. On this side, I have this sort of bookshelf wall divider situation going on. Um, this space for me was always something I wasn't sure how to work with in my bedroom because if there wasn't anything here, it felt like there was a little bit too much space where the closet was. And so what I decided to do was basically combine this tall bookshelf vertically and then this uh, room divider from Artec as well um, to sort of create this uh, zoned living situation. And so I have my bed on this side of the room divider. And then on the other side of the room divider, I have basically where I change. Um, and so this is my closet space. I have a mirror here to check out my outfit before I, I head out. And yeah, I think just makes the room uh, feel a little bit more functional and also in a weird way seems like a little bit bigger than it actually is, um, even though it is obviously just one bedroom. And then <laughs> a lot of people, whenever I bring people over for the first time, I always get questions about why there is a chair here because it seems very random. Um, I found these chairs. These are Herman Miller uh, uh, dining chairs, um, which I obviously are pretty pricey. I found them on a great price for Facebook Marketplace. And so I wanted to find some way to feature it in my home um, and so I have one right here actually just so in the mornings when I'm putting on my socks, I just sit here and put my socks on. Uh, it just makes life a little bit more easier and just, you know, puts, puts to use the dining chair that I already had. And then um, on this wall, I, this actually wasn't here when I moved in. I installed these uh, wooden acoustic slat panels. Um, again, I think just the wall didn't have a lot going on and so I didn't know what to do with it and wanted to add a little bit more texture and character. And so. I bought these panels, which help a little bit actually with the noise dampening. Since I do do content, obviously I have to record my voice a lot. And so this helps a little bit with the noise isolation. And then I think just looks really great as well with uh, the vertical slats running along it. And then I have this TV mounted, um, which actually swivels out if I ever want to watch TV in bed. Um, so that's very helpful. And then, yeah, another one of my sister's art pieces at the bottom here, um, just to feature um, her amazing pieces as well. 
And then um, one quick thing I didn't talk about, this is another Nelson bench. <laughs> I absolutely love Nelson benches. So this is the second one that I have here. Um, I sometimes sit here. Honestly, it's more just as a decorative piece. I have a plant on top of here as well as another rice paper lamp right here. Um, and so yeah, I think just another great piece to add sort of texture with um, the sort of like vertical wooden slats. And then over here is my desk setup. So again, because I do do content, I'm a content creator, I spend a lot of time at home at my desk or at my laptop either editing videos or uh, you know, working with brands over email and things like that. And so um, desk setup was always very important to me. And so uh, this is actually a sit-stand desk. And so I can raise it up if I want to. I can put it down as well. Um, and so I have this desk here, which I work at a lot. And then a very large monitor. Uh, this is a 34-inch ultra-wide monitor. And so it's very nice to multitask and have a lot of space on my desktop to do work. Um, right here, I have another uh, lighting fixture from Louis Poulsen. So this is a wall lamp. Um, and so you can see this is the primary lamp that I use whenever I'm working at my desk at night. Um, very helpful. And it's nice that it sort of swivels and also goes lower and higher based on whether I'm working sitting or I'm working standing up. Um, I have another art piece up here. This one's not from my sister. It's probably the only piece of art that I have that's not from her. Um, but I have a little, few little knickknacks there. And then, yeah, I think overall you'll see my desk setup is pretty minimal. Um, I don't like having a lot of clutter on my desk because it makes my mind feel cluttered. And so I like to keep it pretty much entirely blank with just the bare minimum essentials that you really need. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's sort of how I like to work and keep myself productive. Um, and then... The chair, I think office chairs are very, very important. This is a desk chair called the Fern from Hayworth. Um, this has absolutely saved my lower back. Um, it actually has like lumbar support that's adjustable. And so I have always had lower back issues, probably because I spent too much time hunched over my desk in college. But um, this is definitely a really big lifesaver and sort of saves my posture a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty much the desk setup. Um, I guess the last thing I'll talk about in the bedroom is actually these plants right here. Um, I think a lot of people like to feature plants in their living rooms, but I also love to have plants in my bedrooms. Um, and I've gotten a few people asking me whether that's technically bad for you, because I know at night plants produce carbon dioxide. I'm like 99% sure that's not an issue. I think you'd have to have pretty much an entire forest in your bedroom in order to have um, impacts on the actual carbon levels in your apartment. Um, but yeah, I love having these here. Again, they sort of hang from the ceilings and capture the natural light from uh, the loft down below. Um, so yeah, that's another way that I like to add greenery to my bedroom. And then like I mentioned, the living room is right below. And so you can see um, it's a great view to have to wake up to every morning. I absolutely love waking up here. Um, I've been living here for two years and there isn't a morning when I wake up and sort of open the blinds and, and look at this view and get tired of it. And so yeah, I am just super, super grateful that you know this is the view that I wake up to every morning. I think to me, home means somewhere where you truly feel at peace. Um, I think, you know, like a home can look really great or for example, like I, I have a lot of comments or people telling me like, oh, your apartment is so clean all the time. Like it's not like it feels like very staged or it feels like very fake. Um, but that's like just sort of me. I like to clean my, I like to keep my space very clean. That's just how I, I like to live. And so I think home to me really means being true to yourself and creating a space that you feel completely comfortable in and that you feel, um, is really inviting and somewhere where you want to come back to every day and just relax and unwind and just really not have any other thoughts in your mind. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.